Welcome to Keith and the Girl. I'm Keith Malley. I'm Chemda. Today's guest has performed on Jimmy Kimmel and the co-host of the weekly show Hush Money with Mehran Kagani. Ryan Donahue. Hey, everybody. Hello. Thanks for having me. How you doing, Ryan? I'm doing very well. Thank you for asking. I saw Hush Money. Such yeah. a fun show. It is a fun show. I cannot believe you guys do that weekly. Yeah, it's silly. There was, I mean, the lineup is insane. It's people that you should be paying 50 bucks for, and they're just throwing it out in a small bar yeah and it's just a fun setup like we don't really we tell people do whatever you want we give everyone a dollar so if the show sucks you don't tell anybody you know and it's just like a fun little thing take the pressure off of everybody and just kind of do whatever the hell you want it's true that they do whatever the hell they want the audience gets the money yeah yeah yeah, audience and comics everybody wait a minute what I'm, did you not get a dollar last time you came? I'm owed a dollar. You I, are owed a dollar. I came late, so maybe that's. Oh, why. that is why. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. We don't okay. pay people who are late. No, I'm just kidding. We, uh, <laughs> no, it's just you know at a certain point. But sometimes we'll remember. We'll throw money into the crowd for whatever reason. It's just like a fun little thing. To the bar just gives us fifty ones, and we just get rid of them however we see fit for the week. They really do do whatever they want. It's really mostly Mayron. Yeah, Mayron is just like he can't shut the fuck up. He can't. But it's fun because it's like yeah, it, I, he'll do like after like the show will be over and then he'll just do like a q a on like dicks like how you can tell like someone's girth certificate as he would say like and it's just like everyone raising hands and asking questions it feels like the breakfast club but like he's, terribly he's so good at chatting with the crowd because you feel like oh come on like there's a good lineup like you don't even have to do that but then then you're like yes talk right. to me next this right is so right good. and then he'll he'll not only talk to the crowd he'll also talk to the comic while they're on stage he'll be yeah like, i know you do honey and yeah. i'm like what i the, i've never seen anyone bring up comedians by talking about what their dick probably yeah. looks like more often than what he does and half the time as the show i'm just like what the hell are you doing and people and it's just like this bar show and i'm like this guy's amazing he's been had a half hour on comedy set like building them up to the, this immaculate like thing they'll never live up to in this bar and they're just like all right and they come on and i don't know it's just a fun time mayron is just uh yeah, you'll want to suck this guy's dick i know i wanted to for years yeah yeah exactly. anyway. and his husband's in the crowd <laughs> yes just like talks about how bad his husband's cum tastes and everything <laughs> like it's just like oh man hey they're supportive <laughs> right no it's the best noah's the best hey noah pineapple yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> battery acid. He said less asparagus. <laughs> right, right. He said it does. Mayron's like, you know, it doesn't even. It doesn't matter what I feed him. It doesn't. You know, he's like fed him and done experiments. He's like a <laughs> lab rat. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Shout out to Mayron. Yeah, you. absolutely. Love that guy. I'm actually gonna. Yeah, it's tonight after this, so we're gonna be heading over there. The show is at Pink's NYC, which ironically Mayron despises. Oh, he despises what? The name of the show or the place? Pink. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I think he, uh, I don't know. I don't think he despises. I'm talking vaginas. Say again? Oh, oh, I understand. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I thought you were talking about like the owner. I was like, I don't know that they have anything wrong. Yeah. That um, was our very sophisticated I don't think he despises. Joke. No, but he doesn't despise vagina. He talks about how he's like, uh, you know, what's the line? Uh, like, I'm no stranger to the mean streets of vagina town. That's what he says. But, uh, yeah, I don't I don't know. I think he loves vagina. He just prefers penis. I don't I, know. I think when you say things like, I'm no stranger to, yeah, y- you're a stranger. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I saw doing, uh, watching your stand-up. Yeah. You have a pacemaker. Yeah. Do, do I talk about that? Yeah. I, I found out. Really? Yeah. What tape? Uh, it's go to YouTube slash you. You know, we also go outside. Right, right, true, true. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> you, what you, you don't exist only on the internet. In other words, and, and and you know, but I did come to your show the other day. <laughs> right, right, true. Yeah, I probably talked about it from time. Yeah, it slips out. We just talk about whatever. Yeah, I got one. I got it when I was sixteen. Um, I had like I was a Make a Wish kid and, and the whole nine. I got like a compact presario of all. I could have got anything. I got Windows ninety eight. I totally screwed myself. <laughs> that's you. Well, that's that, actually true. Yeah. That's the trick for how to live. You ask for something stupid. I, I guess. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. You I mean, you're still here. It would have been a great wish if they just stopped working on computers like that day. <laughs> you know. But like within two months, they came out with a Gateway two thousand, and I was like, I totally screwed myself. Like I could have done. You know. I don't know. Gone to Met. But anyone I would have met, I wouldn't have been happy about me, like Roger Clemens or some. But, but stu- at, at sixteen years old, they're coming at you with a Make a Wish. Are you like? I'm oh, I got dying. the Make No, I got the Make a Wish earlier. I got okay. it when because I was a baby. I was like in the hospital, you know, with all the, 
you know, they didn't know what was going to happen or whatever. And then I kind of, like, got it post. I got it when I was, like, eight in the Make-A-Wish. So it was, like, 1998. And then when I was 16, it just, you know, my body got bigger and my heart was like, hey, I need help. And then they threw that in there, and now I run on batteries. Why did they think you were going to die? Uh, I had myocarditis and spiral meningitis, which is just like an infection of the heart that caused an infection of the brain and spine. So I was just like, uh, th- there was some guy that lit a candle for me and didn't let the candle go out for like six months. And I met him when I was like eight and I didn't know like how to, you know, it was like an yeah. awkward thing. Like you didn't have to do that, but thank you. Like, I don't know how to, right. yeah, it was pretty bizarre. Who was, who was that guy? Just... He was just a guy. I still don't know. I'd have to ask my mom. She knows him somehow, like, through work or something. I don't really know. Do you remember how you responded? Because I remember, like, even even when you're older, when somebody says something like that to you, first of all, you're still processing what's happening to you. You don't even know how to be an eight-year-old. And second, this guy is coming with this deep shit about a candle for six months. Yeah. And it's like, uh, It's kind of weird. Yeah, it's very I weird. I don't get to sleep, but you do. You don't have to light this candle for me. Yeah, you it was know? very... It Can was I like, just have candy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what. Maybe he like had a crush on my mom or something. I don't know. Oh, that's the grossest. <laughs> I don't know. Like some. Like, no, I have no idea what the hell. Like, what are you? You know, I don't know what. I guess it's a nice thing to do for someone, like as a as a symbol. But it's it's a little melodramatic, I think. If you, you put your dying. if you put your hand on your chest, do you feel the pacemaker? Like, yeah, a it kicks in when uh, my beating goes below like a certain uh, like beats per minute or whatever. It'll like. You know, and I, I felt it a lot when I first got it. And if I lay on my left side, I can feel it at night. It feels like someone's just flicking the inside of my rib. But uh, I've, I've pretty much gotten used to it at this point. It's just kind of like a normal thing. But it's kind of like my heart's like a jazz drummer. Like, it's just every all over the place, like, skipping around and crap. But apparently I'm doing well, so I don't know. I don't know how to – I'm like a hypochondriac when it comes to stuff, though. Like, I think you have the right. Yeah, yeah, I guess. <laughs> but it's, a, it's just like I'm always thinking about, like, you know, something like, you know – death Dying. and all these yeah yeah so. well it can stop yeah it can stop yeah and uh, like the other night perfect example i was in uh i was watching manchester by the sea and uh-huh. someone well it was in a movie theater and someone was talking about like cardiac arrest or something in the movie and i right. just was like oh shit i didn't take my and i like took my medicine in the movie theater because just that's how quickly it's just like oh man i gotta you know figure this out so, so. Are, are the meds like batteries uh no the meds well the battery thing is a separate thing the meds are for just like rhythmic and uh, like pacing and stuff. Are you a runner? I am not a runner. I need. I should be doing more physical exercise than I'm doing. Oh, okay. you should be. Oh, because to elevate your heart. So, what are you smoking weed and chilling? Or? Yeah, I kind of oh, smoke Jesus. pot. Yeah, I. But I mean, you know, th- it was interesting because, like, as a kid, they're like, "You can't drink or you're gonna die." You know, like there was like a very like, "Don't do this" and blah blah. blah. And then I was like, "I I drank. I was fine. I smoke weed. I ended up being fine." And then I like took LSD. I was fine. Took mushrooms. I was fine. But I never went beyond that. But like you know, I just wanted to make. It feels weird when you feel like you're not in control of your own existence. Like you don't like to be told what you can and can't do well, by a doctor. You, what made you start the first one? Because you know everyone's not everyone, but I I was scared to uh, drink alcohol and smoke pot and do you know LSD. But you have this extra thing. What made you go? Ah, fuck it. Yeah, I think how it right w- could they be? I was I had a make a wish and I'm still here. <laughs> right, right. I think uh, part of it was just like the general, like not wanting to feel like I am a uh, person a with a pacemaker. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> a victim. Right, victim is the word. Right. And so just that, and um, I don't know. My I had an older brother, and he was uh, influential in terms of like you know you want to be cool for the older kids kind of thing. So that's probably how it started. How old is he? Uh, he was five years older than me. Mm. Oh, so was he already doing drugs? Um, yeah, he was, like, drinking and stuff. I, I was, like, 15 when I started, like, drinking and smoking pot and whatnot. With him? Uh, a little bit. like, But I would, like, kind of – at first I was kind of scared to do it. I mean, yeah, what really uh, took me over the – he, like – he uh, – so he was at a party in um, Narragansett, Rhode Island, um, where sure, I'm from. Narragansett, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, he, like, he and two of his friends took a rowboat on Narragansett Bay after a party, and then they just, like, uh, disappeared. And that was, like, we didn't know what the hell happened. And I think, like, after that... Wait, are we on drugs right now? Or no, is that no, that happened? really, that humanly happened. So, I like, a family was, like, going to the bay every day, and it was, like, this terrible thing, and I'm watching my family just, like, crumble and I had no idea. They what. disappeared. Yeah, he, they, three of them disappeared. For Did di- anyone know they were going to the bay? Uh, they were at a party nearby, and then they found like this like rowboat, and they mm-hmm. just took it out. And it was in March. It was warm, but the water was not. And so there was like we didn't know. And then I remember, uh, yeah, I like cheered my cousin 
um, like at, at our house, and it was like, to the best prank ever, you know? <laughs> and that's like the first uh, time I remember having a beer. It's terribly sad, but right. it's actually, yeah, that's just what happened. And then like over the course of months, we realized that they were not going to come back, so we had a service and whatnot. I'm sorry, it took, it took months? You guys were looking for them for months? Yeah. This is your brother and two of his friends. Yeah, yeah. And they ended up finding, like, you know, not everything, but some things. They and, sub parts of his body? Yeah, yeah. They found, like, a foot and a fishnet and, uh, you know, things like that. They ended up using, like, uh, DNA testing to figure out that it's them. So everyone— so what do you think that is? A shark? I don't know. Well, I mean, I think it's just, like, water over time. It's just, like—and probably, yeah— Anything like so that. So months, it took months to yeah. find, and then they find pieces of body parts. And then we have an, another funeral, like six months later. Because you, found another, like, you found another arm. You have to have another yeah, funeral. Yeah, exactly. Like, his arm's dead, too, okay? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, just this other thing. So it was just like, it was a never-ending stupid pity party that I just resented so much. So, I don't know. Yeah, it was just... you were like, wait, I have, I'm the make a wish No, not even. Right. It, I didn't even care. I got the pacemaker like six months after he had passed away and i just at this point i was just like i don't even i don't i didn't want to be like putting my parents through more stuff you know what i mean it was just like a weird thing i felt like i had to like make sure they were all right so i kind of played the straight man in terms of like not breaking down and whatnot until and, when 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 did you break down um any minute now <laughs> yeah probably any minute no i don't know i had like i i well, came to terms comic, with things so. <laughs> yeah yeah i think that is probably helped like just the fact that I can kind of process this kind of stuff and I, it wasn't until recently that I was able to like really kind of do, like talk about this kind of stuff on stage in a way that is fun for everybody and relatable and beyond just my personal experience you know what I mean so I think that that's huge for me is to take stuff that's that like odd or uncomfortable and then make it accessible and funny what know? was what was the first um because a lot of people remember like their first 9-11 joke after 9-11 yeah Do you yeah. remember your first joke or your first chunk or something yeah yeah um it wasn't even too long ago because i really you know and uh, would, would it be sad if it just bombed the first time no like, I, yeah i mean it is actually worse when you're doing material that's like this and then it bombs but i mean it's good for you ultimately because you got to learn that it's not about your special experience when you're doing stand-up you're like it comes from the initial spark is like from you but the the bigger picture is and and that's the thing like people get shot in the street every day like people you know so i kind of had that whole thing like you know it's just it happens and it's like uh it, it was just i don't know i don't i don't like it some people kind of carry it with them and they just make it their whole life like they make that that be and i can't blame them but it also feels like excessive like life goes on you got to kind of move on but, but don't you have to go through a time where it is excessive and did you go through that where um, it was your and I, I understand the first six months yeah that's probably where... like i partied a lot like okay. that was kind of yeah it was probably a lot of uh that and just like kind of being completely irresponsible and ridiculous and having having fun doing it but also i think that was my way of like working through it i had a lot of friends who were musicians and i was playing music with them and uh that was a thing that i had with my older brother so we kind of like played a lot together and I don't know, just kind of growing up like in Yeah, this. it's it's interesting because I think uh when when people die who are close to you, you feel like um like it there's a it's dictated sort of that you're supposed to be somber for a while and it's weird to have fun while uh you're in the morning stages whatever whatever that is, 6 months, a year, like how are you Yeah, how long? even right away, it's like I you know, you're just numb, so you're just and you're watching other people cry and it just the whole thing just feels so like so much and you're just like ah, i just want to be 15 you know like yeah. it's just this weird thing where you feel obligated to show that you're sad so that you don't like mm -hmm. i had this thing like my my dad wanted to this is probably one of the first bits that i wrote about it but like my dad always loved going to the didn't love it but he would go to the gravesite all the time you know and that's how he like processed it and like he'd go to get a dunkin donuts coffee and like he would just sit by the grave and like the joke is like how dunkin donuts is that like that's so D and D, you know like no one's going into starbucks like could i get an extra pump of raspberry i'm going to look at my dead son's <laughs> grave like you know and then like dunkin donut it's just for defeated people like that's what it is you know like because a, a barista couldn't handle defeated that dad yeah D &D. yeah dunkin donuts dads have dead sons but starbucks dads have sons who are dead to them or like something like you know <laughs> right we're all the same but that's so I mean like that would be part of the argument of growing up too it's like I didn't like to go there I didn't feel like that was and my you know he did and everyone just has a different way of dealing with things I think you just kind of and it was like 
you're also seeing your parents as people for the first mm. time and, and seeing that's too soon. Yeah. And you're like yeah. understanding like, Oh God, you guys like this was not even, and like you're doing the math and realizing like they, you guys got married because like, you know, so it's like so much was just uncovered. It was Whoa. like, yeah, it was like an episode of clue or that's a game, but you know what I mean? <laughs> you made it through high school. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I had some teachers that kind of were like, go ahead. Yeah. Like what next step is all you. Yeah. It would literally be like, cause I just wouldn't do it. And they're like, what, what grade do you want? I was like, just give me a C or a mm. B. You know? You're so nice. Oh, I'll take a C. Yeah. Let's, I didn't, I wasn't, fair. Yeah, I wasn't going to get an A like that's stupid. <laughs> that's and then people are going to test me and understand that you're, you're a jerk for being a teacher. So let's just, let's just make it even a nice C. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's fair, right? I yeah. can't I can't ask for much more than that. Have you ever taken a rowboat out into the ocean? Yeah, to, actually. So the ocean doesn't get the satisfaction? Right, actually, yeah. And I remember, like, yeah, there would be way, that's another way of working at, like, you know, just going and swimming and just, like, being in, like, uh, I would go, we got, like, a beach house one week, some friends of mine when I was still in high school, and, like, there was a hailstorm, and we just went to the ocean, and the waves were just beating the shit really? out of all of us, and it was, like, super cathartic. Are just, you getting drunk to try to recreate the scene? No, I'm not getting drunk, but uh, I was hung over, so I guess that's kind of the yeah. same, you know? But, yeah, it was definitely, like, a... Was it, like, doing drugs, like, just a rush and a fear Yeah, but it was, a, it was definitely a personal experience to me. I didn't really tell anybody that that was what I was experiencing. Mm. We were all just having fun, and, it, and we were. It was always, like, this double thing happening where it's, like, I don't know, yeah, you think about, you know, how this would be if X, Y, or Z, you know? It's very easy to slip into this, like, melodramatic thing where you're the star of some pity show, and I don't know. It just makes me... I don't know. I've never really enjoyed it when people sort of like use that to sort of be, you know, um, like it feels emotionally manipulative when people kind of excessively it, do it. It can be. I know. I know. You, you are using the word excessive, but, you know, where is that line? I know. That's true. Yeah. And I've kind of admittedly like not for the, you know, like a lot of people. Yeah. I don't know. I don't really. Yeah. I don't know. Have you studied what water could do? I wouldn't I would not think it, it could separate. It could decompose a body like that. Oh, no. I mean, I definitely think it can't. Like you, it, yeah. I know that it would just get, like, bloated. I haven't, like, really studied it, but I know that, uh, yeah, it was like, um, I don't think it takes very long for it to just become, you know. Uh, it explodes like a balloon. Yeah, yeah, like lunch. I feel like I've seen um You are in the middle movies. of water, so I guess eventually you do have to be literal fish food. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Is it weird when I say things like that? Uh, not really. I mean, it's yeah. just part of, it's like, it's more like facts. I mean, you, you know, my imagination has gone, you know, over the years through so much of it that it's like it doesn't really, I've considered every aspect of the thing. Cause but that's you really... do have death on your mind all the time, so when you say you sort of, put it in this other place you still have this fear yeah yeah i know it's weird yeah. that well, it's I, not weird it's i mean i guess very normal <laughs> right right sure sure but i mean some people are just totally fine with it um you know like i talk to people and they're like yeah i'm you know i'm ready and i'm like i don't know i don't know that i am but i think you know it's got to be one of those things where like right before it happens you i don't know deal with it i have no idea it's such a elusive it's like the final mystery of this life Mm -hmm. so yeah obviously you know so it's like something that it's the only thing you're guaranteed when you're born if you don't you don't exercise you uh you, you smoke a lot of weed could you ask the doctor to crank up the pacemaker as if you were exercising constantly they do that actually they can uh like i'll they'll call me on a landline phone put a ma i'll put a magnet over my pacemaker and then they will adjust the heart rate like they'll be like all right it's gonna feel like you're running and they'll like put it up to like you know, 100 beats per minute, and then they'll You're put lying. it down. I swear to God. You have a landline? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, like, they can put it lower and whatnot, so they can do that. Uh, Over the phone, really? Yeah. You yeah, it's magic. very weird. I know, it's so weird. You so it's like do that on stage. What, talk about, Just oh, like, yeah. watch this, I'm going to run a marathon. Yeah, but it's like, <laughs> no one, it's like, trust me, everybody, my heart's <laughs> racing right now. Yeah, that's not... <laughs> So it's like, were we having sex and you didn't even call those guys to crank up your heartbeat? Are you even with me? Right. Oh, man. Yeah, it's so bizarre, though. Do you have other siblings? Uh, I do. I have four younger brothers that are all uh, my uh, father's second wife's children. So they're like, so my brother okay. and I were from my mother and father, and then my dad remarried when I was three or five, and uh, divorced when I was three, remarried when I was five. And uh, yeah, he had four. So I have a 17 year old, 15 year old, and two identical twin boys that are seven right now. They do any tricks? Um, <laughs> they look like each other. I would, yeah. I would do tricks all day. Oh, if you were a twin? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that would be, I, it's a good act. It's a good road <laughs> act. 
Not even that. Just like, I mean, I don't know what. Fuck my brother's girlfriend. I don't know what I do, yeah, but you, there's so many things you can do. Yeah, you can watch Sister, Sister yeah. and get Rape. ideas. Remember sure. that show? <laughs> sister, Sister. Yeah, I remember. I used to watch that. Taj Maori. Whatever happened to that guy? The smart guy. You know what I'm talking about? You watch WB when you grew No? All right. I'm alone. That's fine. <laughs> I know who Sister, Sister is. Right, right, right. <laughs> yes. You, but you, it, it might have been uh, a little young for me. Right. We, we know enough. the people in the title. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. All right, let me mention this. Vistaprint, get 500 business cards for $9.99. We use them. We love them, quite frankly. Customize it yourself or use their templates, whatever you like to do. But you don't need to know about art. We don't, and we make them ourselves. They have thousands of industry-specific templates. Upload your logo to one of Vistaprint's designs, or you can upload your own design, whatever you want to do. It's okay? your world. It's your world. It's uh, easy to use, very user-friendly, and they make sure you're happy 1,000%. To redeem this offer and get 500 custom business cards for $9.99, visit vistaprint.com, design your custom business cards, enter code KATG at checkout. That's code KATG. It's a chance to get that professional look on any budget. Do not wait. Go to vistaprint.com and order today. I mean, we've paid more for drinks than 500 business cards that's right you know yeah uh do you going back real quick do you still talk to you your birth mother uh yeah yeah we're actually really close she's super fun like when i did kimmel i like flew her out she came out and met jimmy kimmel and she's like she's lived in rhode island forever so she to go to hollywood was a big deal we stayed at like the roosevelt and there's all like a justin timberlake movie happening by the pool and everyone's like uh you know gorgeous and i'm eating chicken fingers with my mom it was great time out aren't you married i am yeah you didn't take your wife she works you know she has her own thing going on it would have been cool but flew your mom out we know people work but she couldn't (laughs) take time off yeah, no, I mean, apparently, I don't it's know. It's a bummer, right? I yeah, it was If fine. I would have asked her, I would have found out. But, you know, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. She has things. She's her no, own person. Yeah, I think she had some sort of, like... Um, what are you going to do? This is your bug Hollywood well, she, moment. What she acts, do? too, so I think she had a gig or something. I don't remember. It was some months ago now. But, is she uh, a comic also? No, she's uh, she started acting, so she's going... She likes to act like uh, theater is, like, what she wants to do. You're right. She doesn't want to go to Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I feel like once money becomes, uh, you know, I feel like there's not as much money in theater as there is in like five minutes of being on screen you know in like law and order episode pay more than an entire play a lot of times did you ask her what to come yeah 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 of course Oh, okay yeah i would not ask but i i also wouldn't be like mad if it can't happen or whatever i yeah she must have been doing something i I could i could call her and ask her but (laughs) i promise it was something legitimate (laughs) he's like i was doing kimmel so I probably went up there that day, so we have to remember what I did that day. Yeah, yeah. How old were you when your parents got divorced? Uh, I was three. Do you, is, do you remember that? No, I just re- – no, I don't. I remember, like, uh, them fighting forever. Oh, yeah? Yeah, they were just – it was uh, – they're, you know, It's children. funny that they don't think children can know, right? Yeah, it's weird. It's like, uh, yeah, you're just – you know, it's it, – it's very obvious. They just had to, you know, it's it's not worth it to carry the resentment and the bitterness and the whatever. It's just like bleeds into everything that you do. And it I sucks. think we're just learning that 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 kids want their parents to be divorced because, you know, the first wave of major divorce just happened. Right. You know what I mean? Like the, the 50s really is when people started actually considering that. And then it just <laughs> the numbers grew since. Right. But I think we're just discovering that. Hey, get a divorce, you know? Yeah. Like, don't stay together for the kids. Right. It's not fun. It's dinners yeah. are silent and weird. Yeah. I remember going to like I would have more fun going to friends' houses when their parents are divorced. It's much more mm. relaxed, you know. Dinner's like, yeah, eat it where you want, you know. It's like everyone doesn't have to sit at the table and like say what their day was like, you know. Yeah. It's bizarre. Hey, what's going on? You're on Keith and the girl. Hola. Hola, it's your mom. Oh, hello. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what's going on? Um, it's Mimi, and I'm calling because a certain little podcast around the way is celebrating an anniversary this week, and, um, I know not everybody is always on the forums all the time, but I started a thread today trying to collect the favorite memories throughout the years for everybody on the shows, at the meetups, et cetera, the chat parties. 
So I'm calling to send a call out to everybody to come join the fun, share your memories. I think it would be a fun way to look back over the years. Oh, that's sweet. Thank you. That is so great. And let me tell you what Oh, else. and I just ordered cards on Vista Print, so I just want to do my testimonial too. Okay, bye. Okay, thank you, Mimi. Bye. But she didn't say the important part, and that's like the serious part of doing this for 12 years, is I put out there a message, and she gave me that $25 Starbucks gift card for the anniversary. And that's... That's nice. Yeah. That's why we do it, folks. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. No Dunkin' Donuts here. <laughs> no. Hell no. Yeah, I mean. my parents hate me. Bring on the Starbucks. <laughs> uh, so go to keithandgirl.com slash forums and you'll see, w- see what she's talking about. Also, uh, we put out a poll for every show that we did at the forums also. So you fill out the poll, see how other people think. And then yap about how they're wrong underneath, <laughs> and it's a good time. So let's do. Uh, let's go over some polls, and uh, you'll tell me what you think, Ryan. Cool. Uh, we had on Andy Kindler the other day, and he is obsessed with social media. Like it's a real problem. This is his drug. He's on it for f- hours at a time. Like he sounds like an alcoholic. Today I can only have one social media. Right. You know what I mean? Wow. But it, then it doesn't work out. At we least asked- he's like in touch with that. And knows what's happening, you know? I feel like a lot right. of people, yeah. Well, the first step is admitting it. Right. Yeah. Uh, this step has been going on for years, but it's the first step. Uh, like Andy, do you have an unhealthy obsession with social media? Yes or no? Can anyone say no to that? Yeah, I said no. Yeah? Yeah, I'm, it's healthy. Even if I'm saying fuck you, it's healthy. We're not talking about the dumps that you're making while you're tweeting. I, I, Those are healthy. I think I'm, uh, yeah, I think I have a... I, yeah, it's under control. If I can't get to my phone, it's not never a big deal. Yeah. Are you on it a lot? Like, do you check that incessantly? No, I check it, but no, not incessantly. I, does this count? I allow it. I have to shut it down. Sometimes. Like, I'll keep tabs open, right? And one of the tabs maybe is Facebook. And so I'll do a couple emails and then I'll check Facebook. And then what I realize I'm doing is when I don't want to do work. I check Facebook right. and I have to shut that down. That's I feel different. like that's yeah. unhealthy. I'm procrasti- it's, I agree. I have to rate my stand up. I'm procrastinating and uh, the house has never been cleaner. It doesn't mean I love <laughs> dishes. So that's, oh, I see what you're saying. <laughs> but that's still, it is the thing that distracts me, even though I'm not that interested in it. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. I, I, what does, am I checking for? But does <laughs> it upset you? Does it, this kind of thing? Uh, uh, he gets, not, I mean, and, Andy gets riled up. It's not Kindler level. Right. Yeah. It's it's kitty level. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. you would write no because I said like Andy. Okay. I see. All right. Yeah. I would, I would say no, uh, but it is. It feels like I have to have it, which sucks. Like, I, but I don't put enough into it or care. Like, I would never want to tweet a thing that I'm going to do on stage because it feels like it somehow, like I lose it. You know. Right. Like, you know. So it's something like. I'll just the stuff that I don't end up using, I'll throw on there, but I don't I don't use it enough. I feel the pressure where I should be doing more to like get like I've heard of crazy things like really well known comedians who like wanted their special, like famous comedians on in comedian world, right. like wanting their special to be on a certain network, but the network says uh no because they're only having X amount of thousands of Twitter followers and it's just like ridiculous. Oh, wow. And what, meanwhile, Cash Me Outside Girl has a goddamn T V show now. Right. And it's just, it's absurd and gross. And I just saw that movie, uh, Punching Henry, the new Henry Phillips movie. Mm -hmm. And like, there's such good commentary about that where it's like someone who's been working their whole life, great, capable comedian, been through everything, and like they don't have a great social media presence, loses to a YouTube star who has never left his living room and doesn't have anything to actually offer anybody, you know? So I honestly, it infuriates me. But, Sounds like you have a healthy relationship. Yeah, it's not healthy, but it's not. It's also not like an. It is a way to leave a room sometimes. I'll admit, like if I'm kind of, it's like a, almost like a, a re a reflex. Well, I'll just right. like check like what, but it's mostly for the news on Twitter or some crap like that, you know. Twenty two percent of the audience says they do like Andy have an unhealthy obsession. Hmm, not bad. Although I guess that's a lot because if you think about like if we if we change that. To, do you have an unhealthy relationship with anything else? Twenty two percent is high. Right? But the word unhealthy is where probably people are not being like. I feel like if you have an exciting obsession with social media, it probably might have been closer to fifty <laughs> percent. <laughs> you know, like just the word. Like I'm not unhealthy. No, right? You know? right. Yeah, it's a weird. Right? How do you know when you're unhealthy until you know that you're unhealthy? Yeah, until yeah. someone tells you I'm leaving. <laughs> yeah. You know. Now, how some of these polls came up, I don't remember. But are you depressed AF? Oh, that's because of uh, Mike Brown, and right. he had an article uh, about being depressed. Mike gets depressed as fuck. And almost hurts himself. 
Your choices are yes, no, and 28% say yes, I am depressed AF. Not bad in Trump's world. Yeah, no. That should have been 100%. <laughs> Any depression issues, Ryan? Uh, maybe undiagnosed. I've never done therapy. Um, When's the last time you cried? Uh, I don't know. Probably a couple months ago, I hope. I probably got one out while uh, laughing or something like that. But I, I, that doesn't I, count. I know. I want to cry more. Like I'm, I'm actually like searching for like outlets to cry, but that's kind of a creepy thing. Like I went to you want a, punch you in the face? Uh, just real quick. It wouldn't. But yeah, that would be just shame cry. I want like uh, in touch with myself cry, you know? Like I want to make myself cry due to what, you know. But um, could you think about your brother and how obviously you were at the same? But party? you know what it is, dude. I think I Let's really just have a moment of silence. See what happens. I think I had to not cry. Like I felt this need to like not because uh, everyone else was, and it was like, well, someone's got to not. So then I just didn't. I think it, it felt like that was my sort of role in that moment, which is odd. But I feel like that might be where the sort of and I grew up Irish Catholic. There's nobody that's less in touch with their emotions <laughs> than Irish Catholic people. All right, here's the poll. Are you in the closet? Yes or no? Not one single audience member, congratulations, is stuck in the closet. Wow. <laughs> Not one. What do you, <laughs> wouldn't they just be like, I mean, isn't that what being in the closet is? Ew. It, it, <laughs> it's just it's being anonymous. If they say yes, they're immediately not in the closet. Right. Therefore, it would be they'd an, be lying. They do know it's anonymous, though. The, oh, but it's, a, it's still a trick question. Right. I see what you're saying. I would say. I, d I like to think they're very, very healthy. How do we rephrase this? I yeah, I have no idea. Who's? Do you want to come out of something? That yeah, that might be. <laughs> How about this? It's a dark where you are. Do you trust anonymous polls? <laughs> 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 yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Does Valentine's Day make you feel bad? So maybe you think, oh, I don't know how to reach uh, this level of love I'm supposed to, or Ugh. maybe it makes you sad because you're single. What yeah. about you? I just I I hate that holiday. I hate that. Holiday. What is it? Too much pressure? It, no, it's just too. It's stupid. It's money. It's a money holiday. It's right. for Does it money. have to be? Your wife's writing in. Does there's, it have to be? <laughs> there's no reason for it to be a day. I don't think. I think that day does not. Is have there a any... reason for any other day to be a day? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> yeah, not really. So... But I mean, at least the other ones have like you know you get together with your family. Valentine's Day, it's like, are you happy? You know what I mean? It's like this weird. Pressure thing. Too uh, yeah, much of it an is. Existential question. I can never say that word. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just I don't know. It is a. It's a very blatant money holiday, much like every other holiday. But that one, it feels like there's Name nothing. Name a that holiday happened. that has nothing to do with money. Let's start with Christmas. I know, right? Well, maybe Thanksgiving, but even that, you got to buy a bird. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some extra food that day. But I mean, that's at least you're getting together with people that you care about. What you know do you what think I mean? you're doing on Valentine's Day? I don't, I, hopefully nothing. Hopefully. <laughs> I really, I don't, I'm against that kind of, I don't know why. I, again, it's like that don't tell me what to do on the day. You know, it's just a day. Well, and Valentine's I to, Day just passed. What did you guys do? We didn't do anything. Okay. Yeah. So I she's think, on board. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. She, well, she's from Greece. I don't know if they even have Valentine's Day in she's Greece. She's not from Greece anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but she, I mean, she's been living in the States for like five years. So it's like anything that we give a crap about a lot of times. She's like, well, I don't know why people give a crap about that. Okay. Did you, you know? feel you had to have sex on Valentine's Day? No. No? He not at all. purposefully did. I think that goes with being like, I don't know, maybe married or something. I don't know. But I just, yeah, it was not a thing that I was like, oh, we're going to, you know. Uh, yeah. No, it feels weird. I don't like this like live for the vacations thing. It's, it's, uh, it sucks. When it's like set up. When was the last time you, uh, you guys had a romantic thing? Uh, what do you mean, like, like sex? Purposefully, <laughs> that's what I call <laughs> sex—a romantic thing. Me and my husband have romantic things uh, three to four times a week. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when was the last time like uh, you guys took each other out or had a date or did like? Uh, like two nights ago, we saw Manchester by the Sea, and um, then we went home. I don't know. Is that does that count? I guess we don't do like. Uh, maybe I should do more. Like a, illustrious things, I don't know, but that is it. That is a very beautiful movie. Um, <laughs> the main character's uh, brother dies. Yeah, and yeah, he's yeah. Stuck with this kid, he doesn't want. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, it was a great movie, or it was a great piece of uh, film. Yeah. By the way, that that does count. Yes, of course. Yeah, go. We go. You know, we you go to the nice movies feeling. together. Yeah, we go. We shoot pool together and stuff. I don't know. We do like fun things together. Go see shows. I'm going to see a play with her next week. I don't know. I mean, like, yeah. But I mean, the idea of Valentine's Day, where it's like got to be more special today than any other day, I just don't like it. I don't like how everything's set up that way. You know. So I take it you don't feel sad on Valentine's Day. 
No, I don't okay. feel I feel sad for humanity, but I don't feel sad. That's every day. Yeah, right. That's <laughs> fine. Well, only eight percent of people do feel bad. Yeah, that's that good for good for everybody else. <laughs> Have else. you or your partner ever used a strap on together, Ryan? Uh, ne- never. Okay. I've never been pegged. OK. Yeah. Never done any uh, dildo things with my wife. Do you mess with sex toys at all? No. No, okay. but no, I'm not against it. We right. just—I I, I, that own. was a profound no. Like right. no, we have. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think about it? Uh, not really. Mm. Yeah, I a don't little know. Cock ring on a Tuesday. Cock ring on a Tuesday sounds like a good album, but I don't know about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. I've, yeah, I've never. Uh, I probably, but maybe you know. Th- I'm not. I'm not opposed to it. I'm just like it's not Valentine's Day. I feel pressure. Yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. You gotta get like a little mm-hmm. uh, like edible panties or something. And a swing, sex swing. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we asked, have you uh, or your partner ever used a strap on together? Sixteen percent say yes. Mm, let's make that higher by next year, you guys. Yeah. You know what? Tell your pervy friends about this show. This is too low. Sixteen percent. Yeah, yeah. I don't but know. that's very specifically strap on. So I'll I'll let it pass. Right, right. Yeah, we should do like a uh, toys in general during sex. Yes, we should. <laughs> Did you ever have a pregnancy scare? Yes or no, Ryan? Um. Yeah, pro- probably. What if these were all tailored to you? Uh, <laughs> did you did you have a brother that died <laughs> in the ocean? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's just a bay. Um. You don't know if you had a pregnancy scare? I mean, yeah, I mean, eh, late period, but never. Right. it was never like, oh, my God, okay. like, this is real. Yeah, that's the thing. Where is the pregnancy scare line? When yeah. you're scared. Yeah, like when... when I'm, I think I'm, I'm always having a pregnancy scare. <laughs> <laughs> Just constantly afraid. I think when you take the test, have you ever taken the test? Uh, what do you mean, taking the test? Like a pregnancy Pianist, test? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think, like, maybe my high school girlfriend. That uh, counts. Did you even do anything to count that? Because I think, like, sometimes you're misinformed. You're, like, definitely pregnant. Um, What do you mean? What? Did, why were you scared? Oh, because it was, uh, she was late, like, by, like, two, were, two or three weeks. Were you having unprotected sex? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that, I yeah. Nope. I think that's a good way to have sex. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, like not you, not with strangers, it? but when you're when you're with a person and you're like in a one on one relationship, I mm-hmm. think it's a good yeah. Light like the platform. Yeah. So you're saying sex without a condom is good. Yeah, it's great. Hey, children. I hate to say <laughs> I. Well, I'm not telling everybody something they don't already know. How long have you been married? Mm. Five years. No, like two, two years. Yeah, okay. we were only together for six months before we got married, actually. Okay, 74% of the audience has had a pregnancy scare. Mm-hmm. Uh, next question, have you ever cheated on your wife, Ryan? Never. Okay. Ryan? What? Just a second. Okay. Uh, the next one That's the is... way I worded it. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ryan? Ryan? <laughs> did you ever get married within a year because your wife is from Greece? I did, yes. Okay. I did that. <laughs> yeah, that's a bizarre thing. <laughs> yeah. Did you both know? Like, was it was the engagement not romantic because Correct. you both knew what was happening? Co- yeah, it was like, if I come back... Because I went to Greece with her originally when she had to leave because her student visa ran out, and then we were there together, and then I had to come back because I had to do things, like stand up, really. I was kind of going crazy not doing it. And uh, then she came back, and she's like, if I come back, like we got to get married. And I was like, cool, that sounds like a plan. And then we... Uh, do you bother saying, will you marry me? And she goes... You're just saying that because well, I asked her father <laughs> for permission and stuff. Oh yeah, like that. yeah, yeah. And he was yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was a cool like it was cool. And the family like everyone was cool about it, and it was like I don't know. To me, marriage it's like it's a contract. You know, it's like the government right. just knowing that you're fucking. That's really what it is. Would you were you nervous talking to the dad? Even it's though the government. I was, yeah, actually, because he's such a di- he's from Croatia. So I, I I don't know. There was such a different like I had never been outside of goddamn New England really. Right. Um, when we started dating, like I, you know, my whole family has been just generation after New England got me. <laughs> right. Generation after generation, just Rhode Eilish, you know, and um, <laughs> like it's just so much. So then meeting someone from Greece whose father lived in Croatia, it was like this whole thing. And I got in my head and it was super nerve wracking to meet them for the first time. Yeah, for sure. That he might have you killed. Yeah. Or, or like, I don't know, just like I'm not, you know, smart enough. Like I felt like I had to like have better posture and sort of know words right. more. <laughs> Oh, I just did. I did when I asked my <laughs> <It's so deep. laughs> father-in-law to be for permission, and you know, like I hope you give me permission because I'm going to do it. Yeah, right? this is going to be awkward. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, maybe I shouldn't even ask you, right? Yeah, it's like just, road to perdition on the bridge. Right. So, uh, yeah, so I called, and he's a doctor, and I, so, but I, but you know, even 
the older generation, it seems everybody has uh, only cell phones now. So I, uh, I call them and, you know, I'm like, uh, I, I could tell you're in the hospital right now. Um, I just wanted to, uh, if you have a second, talk to you real quick. And I never call him otherwise. He's like, oh, what's God. wrong? Is she okay? I'm like, yeah, everything's good. Everything's fine. I just wanted to uh, talk to you for a minute. If you have a second, what is it? I'm like, okay, I know this is getting weirder and weirder. <laughs> and uh, if this is a voice <laughs> message, I press seven to start over. Um, I, uh, I am in love with your daughter. Yeah, I know. Is everything, you know, and you know, he's like thinking the pregnancy or worse. Who knows? And pregnancy oh, that's or actually worse. a good way to set it up. Because yeah. right, then when right. you ask, he's like, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. It's nowhere close to as bad as what I thought it was. I want to go down on her. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes. You haven't done that all. Oh, Use my car, yeah. <laughs> Use my car. <laughs> so, so then I tell him, and he's, and then he, he could, he's almost just uh, relieved. That, you know, th- he thought it was uh, something weirder. And right. He's like, yes, you seem, you know, to be in love. Just know if there's problems. Blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, and I don't know what he said, obviously. <laughs> and I said, okay, thanks. And Bye. then that was, it. and then you and then that night. Like, uh, I think the next day. Mm. Okay. Because that night would have been too much. I was in the studio when I did it, so it must have been the next day. Fair enough. Yeah. Were we here when you did that? Yeah. Yeah. I think did you went in the other room and then you came back like. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I went. Yeah. Did like, you guys do like a big wedding and everything? Uh, a wedding and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I guess people get in their own like you know big wedding. No one wants to be the one that has the big wedding, but I think everyone kind of wants to be have a big wedding. I don't know. What do you guys do? We had uh we went on the top floor of a restaurant in uh, on Federal Hill in Providence, and we got married in front of like eight family members and friends and had dinner. Okay. Yeah, it was like very um low key, but it was actually really nice, and we both cried. So that it was nice. It was because uh, at first we were like, ah, we should wear pajamas. Huh? Who cares? <laughs> and like, thought, you know, we were being cute about it. Like my mom literally like got us off the couch. We were watching cartoons. She's like, come on, you guys, you got to go get married. And then uh, like what did you end up wearing a suit and she wore a blue dress. And um, then, yeah. And then when it when the like the guy who uh, his name um, was Jerry Smith and he like he was dead serious looking us in the eyes and like. It, it became very real, right. and then it was like, "Oh man, this is this is really happening." And then she starts crying, and then I'm like, "Oh man!" And then we both start crying, and then it was really nice. It was really nice, and my grandparents were there, and it, it felt it felt really great. Did and strangers special. come by? Was it that kind of? Era? No, no, we had the whole top floor of the thing because oh, okay. my uh, my mom's boyfriend at the time uh, knew the guy who uh, I see. Yeah, owned the restaurant. Nice. So, yeah, we we got it like that. I married a couple. It was in the park. And people started gathering around, and all of a sudden, it's a show. Oh yeah, I've done. I've been at one of those yeah. shows <laughs> <laughs> on the beach in Florida. I, go, I think I said showtime, showtime. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, let's see. Next poll. Can you relate to Keith needing to see every second of a movie? This came from a conversation about my uh, sweet angel wife. She would start a movie at home. Go. Now, this is this is so specific. Go past the. Promos, for example, or, the, you know, the production companies, maybe a little music's happening, maybe a car's driving down the road. Right. But you can come late to the movie at this point. Then when somebody gets out of the car, answers the door, starts dialogue, she'll pause it. And the movie is ready for us to go. And I hate that. Yeah, I don't like that at all. They took time. Right. It cost $10,000 to show that car going down the road from a helicopter. That's like well, that's like saying I don't look at the top left corner of a painting, like ever. I just have a... Yes. I just, oh, no. I you make sure I don't key. see it. It's over. No, now 100%. We're up, now we're going to be on paintings for a year. No, it's absolutely the case. <laughs> Ryan's a human being. That yes. Absolutely <laughs> I even right. I, I stay in the theater and I watch all of the credits at the end, too. Yeah. And I just sit and I and I allow the film to course through my, yeah. my veins. And then once the lights are up and the thing is off and some guy tells me to leave, I leave. Yeah, I... I start the movie and I say, take me. Yes. You know? Yes. Yeah, they do cl- sometimes clever things with logos. Yeah, I, mean, I like to watch all of that stuff. Even like the sound, like it's all black and like, you know, yes. black screen and so, like a car or whatever you're hearing, maybe dialogue before. Like the director did everything on purpose. It was a choice that they sweated over. Yeah, 100%. Everything is a choice they sweated over. Yeah, I'm well, super meticulous when it comes to anything, any script that I'm writing or whatever. Yeah, so why I don't know. we just watch and mop the floors? I'll get the gist. Right, right. Yes, exa- yeah, general gist. Yeah, yeah I'm not for that. I, I'm with you. 
you 100%. Are you not on board with that? Well, I, to me, it's a gift that you pause it right before anything happens. So uh, all those production, like, you know, the light comes on and then it hops over to the end of the thing. And I'm just like, no, yeah. I'm good with this. And Really? So, so if you get it, to, so, so Valentine's Day would look different for me than it would for you. <laughs> Um, my <laughs> Valentine's Day would be go past the credits and get me to where now I'm a sex scene, <laughs> right? <laughs> and then show me the fucking <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get to the first joke. Yeah, I'm Fifty I... Shades Darker <laughs> again. <laughs> like how many of those are they gonna make? Just watch porn, yeah, ladies. I, mean, I only Just watch, watch porn. Just fast forward to the next. It's one. ridiculous. <laughs> Well, I think I think take um, my panties off in an elevator. What are you twenty? How many times can they be taking their panties off in a it's restaurant? It's just like get fucked. That's not even <laughs> sexy. Like why? What the hell are you doing? There's no. It's so fucking ridiculous. Sounds like Keith has a new movie mate. Cat, <laughs> <laughs> you're out of there. Oh man. I think I'm somewhere in between you and Cat, closer to Cat, because I I don't want to watch the beginning beginning, but. If there is a dark scene and you hear something, like as soon as the movie movie started, it's five seconds. It's... I'm asking to see. What do you mean you're in between? You're at second three? I get the pausing when it comes to TV because no one cares about commercials. I totally, like, I don't think commercials are part of the half hour comedy experience. Right. I don't think, like, the, you know. No, no one's counting that. That's right, crazy. right, right. But is I mean, even. Super Bowl? Come on. Right. And I mean, yeah, exactly. I don't care about that. But when it comes to a movie, it's like everything, you know, the movie starts when the when the lights go. That's okay, like how about part this? of the movie. If you're late. How late is late to a movie where you'll turn around and leave? I won't turn around and leave, but I will Keith? watch it again. Ah. Uh, Keith? Yeah. Well, I live by a theater. There's no excuse to be late. I tell my wife, if I miss a second, I will turn around and leave. Yeah, yeah, that's And fair. she has to know that. It's not a surprise. I know I have 20 minutes before the set time of the movie and the actual movie starts. You, of course, can't take advantage of that if it's opening weekend, but I know exactly where the movie will be. Right. And if we're taking some stupid risk... I will tell you ahead of time, and we have seven other movie choices that day, mm -hmm. same movie. I'll tell you ahead of time, I do not want to miss a second. See, for me, it's like if I paid, I got to get some. Maybe I would leave and go to a different movie or something, right. but I would need to. say you had a movie pass where you could see a movie every day. Oh, I would leave, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. if it was not money-related, I would leave. But anything money-related, I'm, I'm just kind of like, but yeah, even, free even, chips, whatever. Even if it's money-related. Get, get a refund. Hey, I messed up. I'm late. They'll give you a free ticket. Yeah, probably. Like, I am a Yelper. I have, I'm have. i a Yelp influencer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the term they use. Uh, Libby is writing in. And careful, Libby, because I can literally see you. I used to watch <laughs> Mad Men with my ex-boyfriend, and he couldn't stand the theme song. So it always fast forward to the exact moment it started because I'm the best. P.S. I also don't care about the first five seconds. P.S.S. I'm a monster. So... <laughs> The uh, yeah okay you fast forward it's for the ex boyfriend but you didn't want to see it either you weren't like mm, but I do enjoy that song so you're both on the same page my wife you love that song and did it anyway you hurt yourself uh no oh, like a cutter that's adorable I used to love that song <laughs> guess what you don't have now that song and him you know what I have I I I I do the same thing okay here's what happened Theme sometimes when I want to remember him I just fast forward through that song. <laughs> Now, you know how people, it's a, it's a breakup, and uh, instead of singing I Will Survive, she keeps playing Mad Men song on repeat. <laughs> Fuck you. I'm putting on the good heels. I have been fast forward. So uh, some, some shows will have like the beginning, then the theme, then the actual show, right? So, um, so Netflix, usually when that's not the case, they'll fast forward through the theme. But when you do have content before the, the theme song, you have to go through it. I've been watching Star Trek almost exclusively, and I like the theme. It's beautiful, but it's so Space. goddamn loud. It's so loud. So you have the dialogue, and then it's like, da, 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 da. and I'm like, oh my God, I can't, I can't, I can't. Grandpa's sleeping. I mean, it's all whole thing. Yeah. It's too, but here's the thing. So I want to fast forward through that, but hubby face likes saying it along with it, like, face. The final frontier, and I feel did like. Did you notice now they say men and women in space? <laughs> they say they never said men or women, did they? Yeah, they said men in the original, and then they changed it to people or men and women or people kind. Where no one has gone before. Where no one. Yeah, and before I, it was no man, right? That's what uh, I thought because I kept making that mistake. That's an easy change. Yeah, the show is so 
progressive i'm like wow they're even progressive in their theme no no one has gone before mm-hmm. you know at the time wow this I, is really blowing your fucking oh mind my, this oh show oh my god this show <laughs> i just saw the one about religion the bacard i can't i was crying no we saw it you know oh, so good i know i can't i can't i can't get on this thing because i'm just gonna want to talk about it for an hour Start so crying. let's just can you imagine moving. watching star trek Gen- next generation i happen to see every one of those but you're crying he, the Picard was get... ready to die to prove that there's no God. Do you understand this? <sighs> and then the boy, and then that boy, he's so precocious. And the nurse That's is his word. mother. Thank you. Precocious. I... Crusha. Right. <laughs> Hem- Mr. Ex- Crusha. Hemda was saying the other day, you do, haven't seen the Star Trek? He says, make it so, and they have to. Here's that, well, okay, make it so it, is amazing because it proves to you how much amazing. people on the deck are just listening, whether you're talking to them or not. Everyone's on the same page. It's such a well-oiled machine. That <laughs> this guy could be talking to no one, and then, and then everyone has to be on board because all he does is make it so, and he does not repeat himself. Can I admit something? Yeah. I've never seen Star Trek in Look, my this life. This is my first time. That's why I'm doing this. It's oh, ter- really? It's, it's terrible. I, I couldn't get past the makeup. I saw commercials, right. and it's just like, all you're right. Wrong. You're wrong. I'm wrong. I'm probably wrong. wrong. It's a very shallow thing to say. I couldn't get past the makeup. It's not a good it's thing. It's a simple show, and comes to something very stupid right no. now. No. Okay. Oh, my God, right. Keith. It's, oh, my God, Keith. <laughs> we have the poll. You watched. Oh, is there a poll? Every episode, people? but it's a stupid show. It's a It's a simple show. Watch I it said. again. This is ma- oh. it's magic. Oh, it's, okay. ma- it's, oh, it's magical. I'll get on it tonight. I will. What, what's the let's poll? Let's have a whole debate. I, I want to know what the po- I will. Right I will debate you if I. Yeah, I'll watch. What is it on? How do you see it? <laughs> what did I say the other Where's day? Where's the plug? Netflix, Hulu, Life. Oh wow, I mean, they all own it. A nerd will pass it to. What's wrong with you? Star Trek is everywhere. Yeah. How did I avoid it this long? Well, Keith just know. turned down my volume. That's can, how he did it. The, <laughs> the Star, Star Trek, Star Wars, too. I haven't. No, yeah. no, we don't compare that. Why? They're There's all no star in, in space. Star, no. They're all like maybe about no, no, the Bible. No. Kenda learned nothing. So she hated this Star Trek, right? I, I, I was ignorant and I apologize. And okay. I will apologize every time somebody says the word Star Trek. I am a terrible human being. But she does. That I will take. Cut that out, Libby. <laughs> <laughs> he just throws out names now. <laughs> so. Uh, I got to take off my sweatshirt. Let's have it. <laughs> so she finally watches this show. Okay. Which she's trashed before she's seen it. But yes. Okay. I enjoyed making fun of it so That's much. That's a fun thing, yeah. Because people are so passionate about it. Yeah. That, like, if I say the wrong thing, they just. <laughs> and then that's a, yeah, conflict is definitely fun. Terrible. Terrible person. All right. So I'm going to try. Okay. 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 You're wrong. <laughs> she never saw Star Wars. Uh huh. I saw it as a kid. No, she didn't. Well, I definitely did. <laughs> I don't believe it. I don't. I don't remember it. So you're right. <laughs> then you didn't see it. You don't remember <laughs> Star Wars. But Star Wars is different. It's more guns and lasers and like, mm-hmm. like shoot 'em up. Like yeah. you're fighting. Yeah. Star Trek is a philosophy class. Right. A killer stun. Yeah. It's deep. Uh, you put it on stun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> you're not just gonna go into somebody's planet and just start killing. See, all right, why are you beating like down anyway? Lang- if you it's feel a whole language. Way. Like uh, any show that has its own language, it's I just amazing. I, yeah, I'm sure it's amazing. <laughs> it's a great demonstration of uh, you know writing and everything. But I just I don't know. Like I never even uh, you know this is gonna sound so stupid because it is very stupid. But like even those uh, like Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings and stuff, I could never read fantasy because when I would read it or try to, I would just picture it happening like in my dad's backyard. Like because I have mm-hmm. to picture it in a place that I've been to. Right. So there's all these gnomes like in my <laughs> mom's yard, and I'm like, this is not real. Like that's you know what they make movies. My now. directorial, yeah. It's <laughs> like my that was my <laughs> sense. I couldn't like invent a pasture. So your lack of imagination is the reason I can't. <laughs> yes, exactly. One hundred percent. I blame myself. I will. I, this is exactly how I felt before I saw the first one. I, it's just it, sci-fi is not my thing, and I'm not trying to convince you to watch it. Well, I loved Interstellar, and I loved uh, that new Arrival. I thought that was a great movie too, and that's kind of sci-fi, right? Even though it's kind of based in human relationships. Kind of might like those. They're very boring. <laughs> you, this is how he describes my taste. Isn't Klingon like the best, Hunda? No. Oh, okay. No, only uh. Worf. What is wrong with you? <laughs> what is the matter with you? No. Wait, what did the poll say? Do we have a poll, the poll on Star says Trek? That he had two human parents, and so <laughs> their power. <laughs> uh, no, this will be the poll that what we're going to say. Oh, next? you're going to ask. Oh. <laughs> the Ferengi is awesome? What is wrong with you? Now, do you want to learn these languages? Kind of. I want to know about star dates. <laughs> it's sick. Do you I want to go to conventions. Do you know what star dates are? Yes. 
dates that they make up. You know that? Yeah, I know. But I but I have a I, I didn't look into this yet, but I have a feeling they have some sort of like meaning. Well, it seems to me that they run on <laughs> that they run on their own. Like they, they make up a rule and they would stick to it. So it seems to me that their star dates would make sense. Right. Yeah. They, you know what I mean? They're consistent with the logic yeah. of the thing. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, know, I think they would get a lot of shit. Do you know what he did? Right. Last before? summer. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm on season three, but go ahead. Is there a spoiler alert coming? Because I might watch this show. Oh, no. Do not. Do not. I can see. You can I'm always, so you always, mad at you right now. You can always I'm tell when mad. someone's going to spoil something, but they turn their chin a little bit. There's like a little <laughs> thing where it's like, I know something you don't, and here it is. It's like, he's not coming back. Or no, whatever. don't. I'm already getting mad at, at Michael because he, he's loving that I'm watching Star Trek. So he's like, did you get to this part yet? And I'm like, what a risk. <laughs> 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 what a goddamn risk. Anyway. Hi. You know about the Q? Yes, what a troublemaker. <laughs> Flings them into fucking years from now. Holy shit, they're not ready for that. Yeah, they're definitely not ready oh for that. Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> he made Picard beg. Is the Q part of the main Q group? Yeah, but he's rogue also. That he's not part of the group. He was he was so too much a troublemaker that kicked him out. Well, he's rogue also, but he's part <laughs> of the Q. He comes from Q people. <laughs> <laughs> which are entities, I believe, or he can turn into an entity. I'm still not clear about the entities, but... He can know. do anything, period. Yeah, I've been watching <laughs> it, Keith. He stresses me out, though. Every time he appears, I'm like, oh, my God, what's going to happen to my people now? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Is he like a evil kind of yes. guy? Ah, like a Walter White kind of like accessible evil or Imagine like a uh, evil all the time? It's like God. He's like, I have all the power. Let's see you dance. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. like, you know, Jesus, Muhammad. Or a vice like principal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? If you think this is not fun to me. <laughs> I'm waiting for somebody to be like, you know what? I haven't seen it either. And then go, what the fuck? We should have a poll for it the few people that never saw this right and then see it for the first time and say who's right okay yeah. keith or Henda. it's so fucking deep or it's very simple cool those will be your choices well can it be simple and deep uh, whoa that's deep <laughs> <laughs> uh, andrea has never seen it so she's gonna watch an episode come on andrea <laughs> Come on. <laughs> oh, Andrew, I was hearing Andrea likes good stuff. This is very unfair. <laughs> Andrea doesn't have patience right now. She's doing five mics a night. She's going to go home and watch 45 minutes of Picard going, let me think about that. Well, anyway, they all die on Planet Q. Can you relate to Keith <laughs> yeah, needing to see right. every second of a movie? 60% say yes. It's all part of the movie. Nice. So boom. I'm good at these polls. Kaboom. That, that's your only warning if you want out. Now, how do we make the next poll about Star Trek? Go. We are. We're going to say, uh, <laughs> we're, we'll just ask. Is, oh, I mean the next one that you read. How do I make it about Star Trek on this, for the rest of this show? It, okay, ready? <laughs> is Star Trek uh, Next Generation very simple? 100% say yes. Wait, are we? you can't do simple or deep because deep is very simple a lot of times. It, deep is usually the simplest. Wait, 100% of people said it's simple? Well, no. I, I'm the only one who voted. Just oh, now. okay, cool. <laughs> I don't think, I think you think we keep going in the past and future. Yeah. We just made this up together now. Okay, oh, cube. that's fun. <laughs> Wait, but no, we can't say simple or deep. Yeah, I'm that's over not... it. Bon appetit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I think we covered everything. Star Trek is dumb. Uh, you watched every episode. I really, yeah, I've tried to watch it before. Like, because it was the ago. happening thing, and I happened to catch the first one, and then I got into these characters, and I would watch them. But nothing else was going on, and I only had uh, not even what they would call basic cable. I had three channels. Yeah, that's like how I watched Cheers. Right. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Why is that a show? I can't believe those shows. They just oh make... Oh, my God. Hold on. Ah. Four, four people at a bar. <laughs> What's be This will be the poll. <laughs> What's a better show? Cheers or Star Trek? The Next Generation, yeah. That's interesting. Can we vote in here first? <laughs> I don't have enough experience That's with either to say, but I would assume Cheers just because it's... Because you have a brain. Cause, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Che cheers. You just want to watch old people well, talk to each humans other. Humans interacting uh, is an interesting 
thing. Whereas like these people that are kind of people but kind of not people, space people, I don't right. care. Like I don't. Wow, bigots. No, I just. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd I'd rather watch humans than uh, you know sort wow. of. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You know the aliens can hear you. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's the poll. Cheers what? or Star Trek: The Next Generation? That's a Likes good. Yeah, that's and you can. My, eat, and my then you. Does what about Golden was... Girls? You watch Golden Girls? <sighs> See, that's fun. That's a fun show. I don't want to say that it's not. That is, it's like. What? Ripping the rainbow flag. What's wrong with you? You can't ask me that. <laughs> that's. It was also a very forward show at the time. The, the jokes are corny, just like every other sitcom, but they're right. old. They get it, so it's like, whoa, they're talking about sex. I don't want to criticize that show. Yeah. That's for other people. To criticize, you're saying? To, <laughs> to watch and enjoy. I don't want to take that away. Okay, okay. Cheers. Stop it. Oh, yeah. that's Stop you're, it. The, You draw the line at cheers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the snotty waitress that works there, what's her face? You know what? I mean, this is really. I, I don't want to touch anything, but I'm a waitress at some bar that I don't make money at. Uh, let me let me fuck the the bartender who treats me like shit and hits on everybody. Great premise. That sounds like a good argument. I haven't. Right. I don't know who she's talking about, but I, all of them, <laughs> Diane. Diane. It's just one. Yeah, they're all sort of. Uh, I'm assuming just kind of uh, intentionally one dimensional, so that yeah. you can have the right yeah fodder. The only good character on that was Carla. If we can just have a show about her. Wasn't Frasier on that? Yeah. Pre yeah. Frasier, Frasier? Uh -huh. Yeah. And the fact that people continued and watched Frasier on top of Cheers. Oh, yeah. Where are we? Yeah. Where? Did you watch it for the dog or the cane? What the fuck? Yeah, that's like. Uh, for the curmudgeon dad? Nah, here are all a bunch of fruits talking proper. <laughs> that's oh, like no. The Beavis and Butthead, <laughs> uh, the guy who lived next door to them, was like, you kids stop jerking off in my tool shed. That turned into Hank Hill. So that was like King of the Hill was like a spin off of that. So it's kind of the same thing. It's in exactly that sense. the same. Except yeah. they read newspapers for a half an hour and meet at the coffee shop and have boring conversations while he's still in love well, with his Well, do you like friends? Caretaker. Do you hate friends as well? I liked about one or two seasons of friends when they got it right and then it's they the can same die. Thing. I feel like those are the That's same show. That's what I'm show. saying. It's all the same show. It's yeah. all the sitcoms from certain era. Friends, yeah, they'll never change the formula. Like they don't want to take risks, you know. Friends got a little better because their their timing was wonderful. Dude, they're, people they're in really Greece good. love Friends specifically. For some reason, they all just love Friends. There's some things that great make me racist. Now I just yeah yeah. <laughs> That's how he explained uh, getting the daughter's hand in marriage. He said, "Picture I'm Joey." <laughs> yeah yeah, I'm Joey, <laughs> I'm, but with I'm a going... Chandler job. <laughs> right. And <laughs> Ross's heart. Ha, ew. <laughs> Gross. I I'll stomp on it. Uh, he Ugh. was so emotional. Just so you stop. <laughs> <sighs> that's Russ. That's my Russ impression. We've fallen. We He's the fallen. same as Russ. Get to know yourself. <laughs> Listen, we're talking about TV, and I'm getting heated. This is the thing that would uh, is going to upset me, though. I go, hey, Hemda, what do you like better, Star Trek or The Bitch in Apartment 23? And she'd be like, well, The Bitch, of course. Star Trek's silly. Oh, no, my head will explode. You can't compare those two. Okay. It's a different thing. You watch it for different purposes. I can tell you what's better, Star Trek or an orange an orange. Yeah, an orange. Yeah. No question. Right. Well, I don't want to be stuck on an island with Star Trek. <laughs> so if that's what we're talking about, yes. Yeah, but an orange wouldn't take you that far either. <laughs> I, I would enjoy it a little bit more. So You think so? <laughs> would you wait until it was going to be the best thing ever and then have it? I would. I'd yeah, probably do I that. think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah you'd yeah. have to. Or No, I'd be... I'd probably be in a, I'd open it when I'm really hungry. I'd, I'd allot it. I'd have like one little... What do you call those? Slivers. Yeah. Every hour. And then I'd be like, well, maybe every half hour I'm going to die anyway. Who cares? Right. It would be terrible. You ever see The Revenant? It'll be covered in bugs in two seconds. Oh, yeah, yeah. I did see The Revenant. I didn't, so it won't be covered in bugs. All right. Listen, Ryan. Your job. Uh-huh. Till we see you next. Okay. Yeah. See every episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. <laughs> How many seasons are there? 17. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Sorry, buddy. Uh, Ryan J. Donahue is the Twitter account. Yeah. He has a podcast called Strange Behavior Podcast. It yeah. will be released on the 15th of March. This is on iTunes, SoundCloud. You know all this. Mm -hmm. The Strange Behavior Tour. He's already scheduling. Fuck yeah. It. Podcast didn't even come out yet. Who gives a no, shit? No, it's just going to be to like, you know, sort of send a little send off beginning of the podcast. I kind see. Of thing. Yeah. That'll be in mid-May, mid-June. Yeah. Chicago, Detroit, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, Philly, Boston, Rhode Island, Worcester. That's yeah. the steak sauce. Yeah, yeah. New Hampshire. Uh-huh. All right. The they, big, the one and only. 
Your Twitter is Ryan J. Donahue. Yeah. Who's Ryan Donahue? A kid that's named. Look how mad he got his, right away. <laughs> no, his name is James Donahue. Oh, that's And he it. wrote at Ryan Donahue, and he tweeted twice in 2009. The first one said, I don't know what I'm going. <laughs> and then the second one said, doing. And then that was it. And I tweet at him every so often, just being like, hey, man, uh, I don't really want to do this, but it seems your name is James. Can I just have that? I do know so what I'm going. So can all of you guys please tweet at, at Ryan that's Donahue? That's going to help. You don't think so? No, that's going to be worse. Why, because like, he'll think that he has something special? Yeah. Ah, I don't care. I'm never going to get it anyway. But if I got it from that, that would be, I'd owe you guys the world. That would be amazing. You hear that? You guys, the world. The world, Chico, and everything in it. You going to watch that one? Come to- yeah, that sounds like a good one. <laughs> yeah, it's a great one. Yeah. Oh, that's a new. They're coming out with a remake of uh, that. <laughs> it's a secret. It was, what do you mean? What is it from? What is what from? Oh, I thought it was from uh, Scarface. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. they're remaking Scarface. Yeah. Which I don't know how to feel about it because it's a classic. Maybe you should leave a classic alone, but I don't know. He does two mounds of coke off his desk. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like he has more guns. He's, yeah. This time her uterus is not only polluted. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's why disseminated? You, I don't like how they're doing that. Like Denzel won an Oscar for goddamn Training Day, and it could have been a mediocre movie, but he's so goddamn good that it was great. And right. now they're making a show out of that, and it's just like let the guy have done a great thing, and now it's just a goddamn show. I, I watched the show, and every episode he keeps uh, sneaking his partner PCP. Are you serious? No, <laughs> no. I I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt it. It really. Like, oh, I fell for it again. Yeah. I was just trying to. Oh keep man, training. I'm just so nervous around your alpha maleness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Whatever. All right. Uh, KeithandTheGirl.com slash marathon. Please take a look. Uh, we have another marathon coming up. It's a 24-hour marathon. Also at that link, you'll see tickets to my yearly stand-up show. Yeah. Make it so.